Hello everyone. My name is Coralfi Forte, and this is a short documentary about my life. I was born on January 1st, 1963, in Fall, Alabama. And uh, I was the first baby born in the city that year. Um, I wasn't born in a hospital. I was born at home and there was a midwife. And uh, there was some discussion about whether or not I should be recognized as the first baby in the city because I wasn't born in a hospital. But the city did decide to give me the uh, first baby of the year born in the city baby gifts. And I remember growing up seeing the little baby chair and the, uh, the little uh, silver spoon and silver fork. So I grew up seeing those things around the house until I was about seven and I don't know what happened to them at that time. But my parents also told me that being the first in the city meant that there was some, or a special calling on my life. So uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. But I do feel on most, most days that um, my, my purpose or my purpose driven life is very, very great. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about how I started. Um, the house I grew up in was a small house and um, out of 10 siblings, there was three of us in the house at the same time. And my younger sister and I shared a room. Actually, we lived in the, we slept in the living room. It was a small house on 365 acres of land and it was um, air property. You don't hear a lot about air property now, but it was 365 acres of air property. And we farmed all the land. And when I say farm, I mean really farm. Like peanuts, cotton, uh, we had chickens, we had, uh, we had pigs, we had cows, we uh, cured our own meat, we raised our own vegetables, we had our own collard greens, and we took a lot of stuff into the store to sell. And my mother, she was the one that was responsible for the vegetables in the summertime, and my dad was responsible for the crops in the wintertime. And there was a lot of things that we wanted to participate in as kids, and we couldn't because we were farming all the time. The only time that we weren't farming was during the day when we was in school or on Sunday when we were in church. Felt like it was from sun up to sundown. But we were always in church and uh, we sang and we sang in the choir with my mom, my younger sister and I, we were sing. And my grandparents, they were all founders of the church, Rocky Mount Baptist Church in Eufaula, Alabama. And we grew up there, you know, we didn't have any, we didn't have piano, we didn't have drums, we didn't have guitars or anything. And we had to clap our hands and stomp our feet and make a joyful noise to the Lord. But we did it. Hello, this is Karalfi again, and I am standing here in my hometown of Eufaula, Alabama. And where we are right here is downtown Eufaula, and this is where my parents used to come to sell produce. We used to sell um, peas, greens, cucumbers, tomatoes, sweet potatoes. We would come out here and everybody had a stall and you would sell produce. My parents did this for years. It's very different now than the way it was back then, which is 30 something years ago. But I'm here this morning, I'm visiting back here in Eufaula, Alabama, and it has been quite a rewarding experience for me. You know, it's made me very, very humble, and um, you know, I'm, I'm just seriously contemplating coming back home because I love it here. I still feel connected to my parents, even though they are deceased. So. Continue to stay with me. There's more to come on you, Fall, Alabama. You know, when I um, look back over my life and think about my mom and dad and the fact that they both died when I was very young, there were so many things that I'm experiencing now that I didn't get a chance to share with them. So I talk about my parents a lot to my friends and to my sisters and brothers because that's one way of keeping them alive in our spirit. And they were very, very good parents to us. They always made sure that we had what we needed and some of what we wanted. The um, farm, yeah, let's talk about the farm again. The farm was, it was large and um, 
We grew everything that we needed, vegetables, the uh, meat, we cured our own meat. And um, there was a lot of things that I wanted to do in school. Never went to a prom. Now when I tell people that I never went to a prom, they can't believe it. I said when everybody else was going to the prom, I was going to the field or I was going to church. Both my parents, when my mom was a deaconess and my dad was a deacon, and they were very, very devoted to the church. So they made us very devoted to the church. And we used to go all over you fall singing. And my parents, they used to sing, and I could, let me think of the name of that song. I think it was a Little More Time. Everywhere we went, somebody was requesting a little more time. And I tell anybody I cannot sing like my mom. But the song went something like, um, I'm busy every day as I travel on my way to the city for beyond the sky. And there is not a doubt that time is drawing now and the harvest time is drawing now. But I think I better stop because it makes me get a little emotional because it's been over 20 something years that both of my parents died. Uh, but I often wonder if they were here today what would they think of their children and how we all turned out? What would they think of me? I was number nine out of 10. And what would they think of the world today? Because there's so many things that's going on now that I knew they never had any indication would have been the world in which we're living in today. But they were very instrumental in my life, getting me to where I am. You know, we grew up in Alabama where it was very, very segregated. Uh, we had to go get up at five o'clock in the morning to go an hour and a half. We had to travel to get to school. And it was a segregated school. But we learned, we made the best of it. You know, a lot of people said that the kids that came from the Rocky Mount area, that um, they weren't going to be very successful. But, you know, sometimes when people tell you you're not going to be successful, that builds strength and that builds character in you. So I just wish that I could tell them thanks today. And uh, I do tell them thanks through honoring their memory and making the best out of my life. So right now, um, when I think about, you know, my college years and what college was like, uh, Oh, by the way, I did have a choir scholarship because, again, we were, you know, very low income family and we didn't have money to go to college. So someone told my mom to have me to audition to be a part of the Golden Voices Concert Choir in Tuskegee. So I auditioned, I made it, and um, I sang and traveled with the Golden Voices Concert Choir for four years. I was a second soprano at the time. But today I'm an alto, but back then I was a second soprano. And we, we traveled all throughout Alabama um, singing. So singing really just continued to become a big part of my life. And uh, I am grateful today that that was the case. 